Good day, grade pens. Welcome to this lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're actually going to start revising our paper one. We finally got to the point where we finished going through the whole of the grade 10 curriculum, and we're now going to be revising. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to revise paper one, and then I'm going to revise paper two. So if you guys would like me to revise specific questions, you need to just ask me and ask me different questions and or different sections and I will happily revise those with you. Okay, so let's get started and all I've done was I found an exemplar of a paper one exam and I am going to now go through it with you for grade 10 that is. Okay, so it says simplify the following expressions fully. Now, the first one says m minus 2n, and then it's m squared minus 6mn minus n squared. And what a lot of people do is they make a silly mistake and they forget that they're simplifying and they multiply out the brackets, okay? And I hate to say this, but the examiner is actually expecting you to do that, okay? He's expecting you to make that mistake and multiply out the brackets, when in fact, we don't need to. What we're actually doing is factorizing. So the only thing we need to do is try and factorize this second bracket here. So we've got m minus two, and then we've got m squared minus six m minus n squared. Um, and the factors of m squared is one and one, and the factors of n squared is one and one. So in fact, there's nothing we can do with this, nothing. It is in fact in its simplest form already. Sneaky question, hey. Next question. Right, let me just erase the link. Then the next question, it says, simplify, we've got x cubed plus one x cubed plus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1 minus 4x squared minus 3x minus 1 over 4x plus 1. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can factorize the denominator. Okay, this one I definitely can't factorize because that's a fact. A, a, uh, the, the, the number in front of it is one, and that's one, and that's one, so there's no factorizing. But x cubed plus one, I can factorize, and it becomes x plus one, x squared minus x plus one, okay? The way to do that is actually, to be honest, is you need to just remember the rule that you take the cube root of the x, the cube root of the one, and the plus sign. Whatever the sign is, you do the opposite between the x squared and x, and there you go. Over x squared minus x plus one. How nice is it that those two cancel? Minus, let's see if we can factorize this thing. So the factors of four are four and one and two and two, and the factors of one are one and one. Now, we want there to be a difference of three and we need the signs to be different. So do you agree that two and two aren't gonna cut it, but if we had minus four plus one, then we'd actually get there. Because four times one minus one would give me minus four. One times one would be plus one, which equals minus three. So do you agree, I could write this as four x minus one, x plus one, oh, I'm sorry, I'm making a mistake. You write it from left to right. Okay, sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. So you write it from left to right, so it becomes four x plus one, and then x minus one, all over four x plus one, and then these to cancel. So how nice is it that what I have now is the first term, which is just x plus one, minus the second term, which is x minus one. And please, please, please grade. Tens, remember to put your bracket in, otherwise you're gonna mess this up. So it becomes x plus one minus x, and a minus times a minus is a plus one. X minus x cancels, and one plus one equals two. There you go. Next. It says factorize the following expressions 
fully. Okay, so now we are factorizing. So let's look at this first one. Okay, we've got the factors of six, uh, six and one, three and two. The factors of 20 are obviously 20 and one and one and 20. And then we've got 10 and two and two and 10 and five and four and four and five. The signs have to be different and the bigger one has to be a minus. So six times one is six and one times 20 is 20. It's definitely not going to give me a seven. Six times 20 is 120, that's not gonna work. Six times two is 12 and two is not, 10 is not gonna give me a seven. Six times 10 is 60, that's not gonna work. Six times four, is 24 and five is not gonna give me seven. And six times five is 30. So it's definitely not this one. Let's look at the three and two. Three times one is three and one times two, two times 20 is 40, not gonna work. Three times 20 is 60 and one times two is 62 or 58, not gonna work. Three times two is four and 10 times two is 20, I mean three times two is six, and 10 times two is 20, but that still does not give us a seven, so that's not gonna work. Three times 10 is 30, okay, and four, that's not gonna work. Three times four is 12, and two times five is 15, that's not gonna work. Three times five is 15, and two times four is seven. At last, minus 15, oh dear, it's at eight, sorry. Plus eight is equal to seven, yay, that works. So it has to be a minus 15 plus four. So this becomes three X plus four, two X minus five, there we go. Sure, quite a nice equation that one. Let's look at this, we've got A squared plus A minus two AB minus two B. Okay, so it's obviously not a trinomial because it's got four terms, agreed, pretty obvious, right? What about if we had to group it? What about if I had to take out, if I had to group this and this, okay? And the reason I'm putting that brackets below is gonna be, because I'm gonna be taking out a minus and then that's gonna change that sign in there. So this becomes a squared plus a minus two ab plus to be okay let's take I take out a common factor of a here what am I left with I'm left with a plus one minus if I take out to be what am I left with a plus one ah but then these two are the same so I can group them so it becomes a plus one and what is left is just the a minus to be hmm very nice question that I like that question Next, it says determine without the use of a calculator between which two consecutive integers root 51 lies. Okay, they want to know between which two consecutive integers does root 51 lie. Okay, so what we need to think about and the way to think about this is the fact that we've got square root 51 and we need to find it between two consecutive integers okay in other words this would be x okay and this would be x plus one do you agree so we're saying that do you agree that root 51 lies somewhere between two numbers okay either x or x plus one okay now what do you think i could do I think what I could do is I could square all of it. So if I square all of it, I get x squared is going to be smaller than 51, which is going to be smaller than x plus 1 all squared. Do you agree? Okay. So let's think about this for a little bit. What is a 7 squared? 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 56. Okay, so there we've already got something there going. So do you agree that if I said, well, that x squared was 49, 
um, then it would definitely work that this would be 56. Okay, because this would be 7 squared and this would be 8 squared. No, 8 squared is 64. Shame. 8 squared is 64. But they didn't ask it. They said determine without the use of calculator between which two consecutive integers. So the two consecutive integers that root 51 falls between are 7 and 8. 7 and 8. Now it says prove that 245 is rational. Okay. Well, do you agree that I can write this as 245 over 1,000? If I can write that as a fraction, then it's definitely rational. In fact, not only is it um, being able to write as a fraction, I can actually um, divide both the top and the bottom by 5. So if I do that, you get 5 goes into 25 4 times, remainder 1, I mean 4. 5 goes into 45 9 times. And five goes into a thousand two hundred times. What happens if I were two four five two four five over one one two three four five six? Do you agree that that would be forty nine forty nine over two, and then it'd be one two three four five one two three four five, which is still a fraction. So. Yeah, we can definitely show that the recurrence of 245 is definitely rational because we can definitely write it as a fraction. Now it says determine without the use of a calculator the value of x in each of the following. Okay, so what x squared minus 4x minus 21 equals 0, and that's minus 4x. Okay, so we needed to bring the 21 through to the other side in order to get the correct result. Okay, so now what we need to do is look at the factors of 21. So the factors of x squared are just obviously 1 and 1. The factors 21 are 7 and 3, and we want a negative 4, so do you agree I can write that as minus 4 plus 3? So that's going to be 7x, oh let's try again, x minus 7 or x plus 3. We haven't finished, they actually want us to find the value of x itself, therefore x is equal to 7 or x is equal to negative 3. Okay, excellent, let's do this one. We've got 96 is equal to 3x to 5 over 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 3. Okay, so that becomes 32 becomes x to the 5 over 4. Now, to get x by itself, what I need to do is take this to the power of 4 over 5, but then that means I have to take this to the power of 4 over 5. So this cancels with this, and this cancels with this, and we're left with x. 32 can be written as 2 to the power of 5, all to the 4 over 5. The 5's cancel, and you're left with 2 to the 4 is equal to x. And if you're not sure, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times by 2 is 8, times by 2 is 16. So x is 16. There you go. Okay, now they're asking us yet yeah, to solve for x again without the use of a calculator. It would be very difficult to do this with a calculator because of the r and s in that. So, <laughs> but we're solving for x. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we have got r is equal to 2 root x over 3s. So what we're going to do is multiply both sides by 3s. So then this cancels with this, and we've got 3sr is equal to 2 root x. We then can divide both sides by 2. So this cancels with this, and you're left with root x is equal to 3sr over 2. But now we need x by itself, so do you agree that I can square this side? 
But what I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side. So I'm going to square this side as well. So therefore, I've got x squared is equal to 3 squared is 9 s squared r squared over 4. Right, not too bad here. Hey? Now it says, solve for P and Q simultaneously if 6Q plus 7P is equal to 3 and 2Q plus P equals 5. Okay, now there are two ways to do this. One is through elimination and the other is through substitution. I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this equation 1 and I'm going to call this equation 2. If that's equation 2, I'm going to solve this for P. So P is going to be 5 minus 2Q, right? I'm going to call this equation 3. And if that's the case, I can now substitute P into equation 1. So I'm going to substitute 3 into 1. So we've got 6Q plus 7. P is 5 minus 2Q is equal to 3. So we've got 6Q plus 7 times 5 is 35 minus 7 times 2 is 14Q is equal to 3. So 6q minus 14q is minus 8q is equal to 3 minus 35. So minus 8q is minus 32. So q is going to be 32 divided by 8, which is 4. Right, and then obviously you need to solve for p. So you can sub that, okay, sub into 3. P is equal to 5 minus 2 times by 4, which is 5 minus 8, which equals negative 3. So therefore, the points are P is minus 3 and Q is 4. Okay, now I want to show you a different way of doing this, okay? In this case, what I'm going to do is use elimination. In other words, I'm going to multiply one of the equations by number so that I can actually get rid of either the P or Q. Okay, so if you look at it, you can see that you've got 6Q plus 7P is equal to 3 and 2Q plus P is equal to 5. Okay, so do you agree that these are factors of each other and this is also because I could take this 2q and multiply it by 3 and it would be the same as 6q or I could take this p and multiply the whole thing by 7 and then I'd have 7p. So it doesn't matter whether I multiply this by 3 and get rid of the q's first or if I multiply this by 7 and get rid of the p's first. So I'm going to choose to multiply this by 3. So if I do that I get 6q plus 3p is equal to 15 and I'm going to call that equation 3. I'm going to bring down equation 1 so I've got 6q plus 7p is equal to 3. That was equation 1 and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract them. I'm going to go equation 3 minus equation 1. So 6q minus 6q is 0. 3p minus 7p is minus 3p minus 7p is minus 4p is equal to 15 minus 3, which is 12, okay? So then do you agree that P is equal to negative 3? Yay, and that's what we got last time. Now that we've got that, we can substitute into either of the first equations to get Q, and we'll get Q is 4, and there you go. So you can see that there are two different ways to do this problem, and you just have to work through it nice and slowly. Right, now... Okay, so now we're moving on to sequences and series. We've got 3x plus 1, 2x, and 3x minus 7 are the first three terms in the linear number pattern. If the value of x is 3, write down the first three terms. Okay, so then it's going to be 3 times 3 plus 1, 2 times 3, and 3 times 3 minus 7. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. 
2 times 3 is 6. And 3 times 3 is 9, minus 7 is 2. Okay. So do you agree that the difference is, the common difference is minus 4 and minus 4? Okay. 10 minus 6 is 4 and 6 minus 2 is 4. Right, so now it says determine the formula of t in the general term of the sequence. So we know that tn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. The a is the first term, which in this case is 10, plus n minus 1. We don't know what that is because we find in the nth term. And the common difference is negative 4. So therefore, we've got 10 minus 4n plus 4. 10 plus 4 is 14 minus 4n is tn. 14 minus 4n. It says which term in this sequence is the first to be less than 31? So it says which term in the sequence is to be less than 31? So what we're going to do is we're going to find out which term equals 31. And then work out which one is going to be less than 31 in that case. So we're going to go T31 is going to be, no, it says which term, sorry, sorry, we're going to go Tn. Tn equals 31, negative 31, okay, negative 31. And we want to find out which sequence is the first to be less than it, okay? So therefore, we can say 14 minus 4n has to be equal to negative 31. Do you agree, therefore, that we can say that minus 4n is minus 31 minus 14? Oh, sorry, guys, just hang on a second. It's been a tough day. Okay, so therefore minus 4n is equal to minus 45. So n is going to be 45 divided by 4, which is 11 comma 1. Therefore, do you agree that n has to be 11? Okay, because if n is 11.1 when it equals minus 31, then surely when n equals 11, then we will we'll be have a sequence less than 31. Now it says the multiples of three of three form the number pattern 3, 6, and 12. Okay, so that's pretty obvious. Okay, so you got a is 3, r is. Hmm. It's not actually R, it's D. D is 3. Do you agree? Um, I thought immediately that it was a geometric sequence, but it's not because you're not multiplying it by 2 or by 3, you're just adding 3 each time. So do you agree that Tn is equal to um, A plus N minus 1D, which is 3 plus n minus 1 times by 3, which is 3 plus 3n minus 3, which is 3n uh, total. Now it says determine the 13th number th in this pattern that is even. Determine the 13th number in this pattern that's even, tn. Hmm. Okay, let's just forget I said that because let's just, I didn't read the question properly. Do you agree it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24? So this is odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even. Okay, so in fact, we could get a pattern just of the even numbers, it would be 6, 12, 1824 and the difference between them would be 6 instead. So this time we can go tn is equal to the first term which is 6 plus n minus 1 times by the common difference of 6 and we want to know what the 13th number of this is. So all we have to do is substitute the 
number 13 into here. So we've got 6 plus 13 minus 1 times by 6, which is 6 plus 12 times by 6, which is 72, which is 78. So the 13 number in this pattern, that is even. Notice we're just looking at a pattern of the even numbers. Just looking at the pattern of the even numbers is going to be 78. Right, now it says Tando has 4,500 Rand in his savings account. The bank pays him compound interest, compound interest at a rate of 4.25% per annum. Calculate the amount Tando will receive if he withdraws the, the money after 30 months. So please note that the compound interest is per annum and he's withdrawing the money after 30 months. So the first thing we need to do, other than realize that we are using compound interest, is convert that months to years. That's what we need to do. Okay, so the formula that we're going to be using is A is equal to P1 plus I to the power of N. Where P is the principal, the amount of money he deposited. I is the interest, but remember now, it always has to be a decimal. And I know you're gonna go, oh, but 4.25 is a decimal. But what we meant is that you actually have to take that percentage and convert it. So it becomes, 0.0425 and the number of months, okay, but now we're talking annum. Okay, so let's think about this. 30 months is going to be two and a half years. Do you agree? One year is 12 months, two years is 24 months, three years is 36 months. So therefore, do you agree that N is going to be two and a half years. So now all we have to do is substitute that into our formula and then what we need to do is get out a calculator and work it out. So let's do that. So we've got 4,500 1 plus 0,0425 to the power of two and a half. So let's try. So it is 4,500, and then we're going to put a bracket, 1.0425. I'm just adding the 1 and the 0 0.0425. And then we're going to close it, and we're going to make it to the power of 2.0425. 5 equals. Right, so therefore Tando, after his 30 months, 30 months, is going to get out 4,993 Rand and 47 cents. And I know that there are some situations in these exams, specifically the mass exams, where you're not sure if you're rounding off to one decimal place or two decimal places, and then you always have to read the instructions. But this is maths. I mean, this is money. So we're always rounding off to two decimal places because of the cents, right? So therefore, we're going to look at this and go, well, it's 4993.47. So that is going to be... 4993,47 and that is how much Tando is going to get out at the end of his 30 months. Right, now let's look at some more finance. The following advertisement appeared with regard to buying a bicycle on a higher purchase agreement loan. So what is a higher purchase? Remember that a higher purchase is a simple interest agreement loan. Remember that? Simple interest, okay? It says you've got, and they, they, they actually tell you it's simple interest. How nice is this of them? We, they didn't have to do this, but they did. They told us that that was simple interest, okay? So they told us that the purchase price was 5,999 Rand, and you're like, okay, fine. Then they've got the required deposit of 600 Rand, okay? And then they've got the loan term, which is 18 months, and it's 8% per annum simple interest. 
Okay. Now it says calculate the monthly amount that the person has to budget in order for to be able to pay for this bicycle. In other words, when you're doing your finances, you need to be able to make sure that you can actually afford this bicycle, okay? And it's not the 6,000 Rand, it's how much you can actually pay on a monthly basis. So that's what we're gonna work out now. We're gonna work out whether or not we can afford it, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is write down our formula. So we've got A is equal to P1 plus IN, okay, because it's simple interest. Now, the amount of money that we're going to be paying is 5,399 Rand because we're paying the deposit of 6,600 Rand already, okay? So what's left is the amount, which is 5,399 Rand. The interest is 8% per annum for simple interest. So that's going to be 0, 0, 08. And the period is going to be what? It's 18 months. But remember, this is per annum. So therefore, this is going to be 1, 5. And we want to work out what P is. That's what we're trying to work out. Okay, so let's substitute that in. We've got 5399 is equal to P, 1, plus 0, 0, 8 times by 1, 5. Okay, so... Yes, I'm right. Yes, I'm right. This P is going to be the total amount that we're going to... I'm sorry, I made a mistake. What we're actually doing is this is actually the P. The P is how much we owe, and we need to take the amount of money that we're actually going to have to pay in total and divide by the 18 months. So this is my P. So my P is 5399, and that's going to give us the total amount that we're going to have to pay in total, okay? And then we're going to have to divide it by 18 to work out what our monthly budget is going to be, right? So, if we do that, let's get that on our calculator and move this across. So, we've got 0 0.08 times 8 multiplied by 1.5 multiplied by 1.5 equals plus 1 equals multiplied by 5399 equals hmm that did not work let's try again so we've got one plus bracket naught point naught eight multiplied by one point one Point, point 0.5, close bracket, equals, good, and now we multiply that by 5, 3, 9, 9, 9, equals, there we go. So that's 6,046 and 88 cents. So that is equal to 6,046 and 88 cents, and that's what we're going to have to pay off over 18 months. So we need to divide that by 18. So let's do that. So we divide by 18 and that gives us 335.94 cents. So that's how much we're going to have to budget for this bicycle. 335 Rand and 90. Let me just check it. 94 cents. 94 cents. Okay. So that's how much we need to budget. Okay, now it says, how much interest does one have to pay over the full term of the loan? Okay, well, do you agree that well, the total amount that we're going to pay is 6046? We're paying 6046, 88 plus the 600 Rand. 
okay, which is going to give me 6,646 Rand and 88 cents. So for something that was supposed to cost 5,999, I'm now paying 6,646 Rand and 88 cents. So the difference in the two is going to be the interest, okay? So if we take um, 6646.88 and I subtract 5999 oopsie do you agree that the amount the difference is going to be the interest so the interest that has accrued or that I've had to pay off is 647 rand and 88 cents. Okay then, right, last question. Last question for this lesson. It says the following information is given one ounce is 28.35 grams. Okay, so one ounce is equal to 28,35 grams. And one dollar is equal to eight rand seventy-nine. Okay, now it says, calculate the rand value of a one kilogram gold bar if one ounce of gold is worth $978.34. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is convert this one ounce into grams, okay? And then what we need to do is multiply by 1,000, okay? And that's going to give me the answer in dollars and then we can just multiply by the eight rand 79 and we'll get the rands okay so do you agree it says one ounce is 28,35 grams so one ounce equals 28,35 grams so what is one thousand that's ten thousand um What is 1,000 grams? Well, do you agree that if one ounce is 28.35, if I take 1,000 grams, and which is one kilogram, and divide it by the 28.35, I will get the weight in ounces, okay? So let's do that. So we're going to take the 1,000, 1, 1, 2, 3, and divide it by 28.35, whoopsie, and that will give me the fact that this is 35.27 ounces. So it's 35.27 ounces. Okay, but what do we know? We know that one ounce of gold is $978.34. So therefore, if I've got 35.27 ounces, I can multiply it by this to get the actual value of one kilogram. So therefore we can say 35,27 multiplied by $978.34. Okay, so let's do that. So that is 35.27 multiplied by 978.34 equals, sure, that is $34,509.35. That is $34,509.35. Thirty-five cents. Okay, that's still dollars. Now we have to convert it to rand, and we know that one rand is equal to one dollar is equal to eight rand seventy-nine. So we're going to multiply this by eight rand seventy-nine. Oopsie, sorry. So therefore, if we multiply it by eight rand seventy-nine, what do we get? We get this multiplied by 8.79 equals 
303,337.16. That comes to 303,337, 337,16. Sure, okay. Right, great tens. I hope that you found it useful. We will continue going through all exam paper questions in the next next lesson, which will be on today is Wednesday. It'll be on Monday. Have a great day. Cheers.